You're watching Yoga with Marcy and I'm Marcy. In today's video, we are going to talk about what yoga equipment do you really need? What are the essentials that you need for your yoga practice? What are nice to have items and what is really just unnecessary? And so I've got my spread of items. I will go through all the things that I have, the things that I use the most, what again is an absolute essential for my yoga practice and what is just eh, you could take it or leave it so let us start out with what i am sitting on a good yoga mat so if you are just starting out with yoga you might be asking yourself do i really need to invest in a yoga mat you can do a lot of times the yoga poses on a rug for example you can do them on I wouldn't do them on hardwood floor. I'm on hardwood floor, but I wouldn't do them directly. That sounds painful. You can do them on carpet. And so that's something where if you are just starting out and you don't know if you're gonna like yoga, I think it's totally fine to not have a yoga mat. Totally fine. If you find yourself doing yoga a lot and you really want to have a good practice, you're gonna need a yoga mat. So again, if you're just testing the waters, I think you can get away without, um, you're just gonna have a little bit more difficulty doing some of the poses, especially having your feet um, stay where they're supposed to stay. Um, you kind of lose that stickiness element if you don't have a mat. Um, but uh, I, I totally understand not wanting to invest in a mat until you um, really decide that it's something you want to do. So I can show you one of my mats. I have three yoga mats. Does one need three yoga mats? Technically, this one is for my dog that I'm going to show you. Oh, here it is. Um, so technically, I only have two yoga mats and Rayleigh has one. But basically, this is a children's yoga mat. And I just really wanted it because it had an owl on it and it was pink. And I really like owls and pink. Um, but this one I bought for my dog, so if you ever see it in um, any of my outside videos, this is for Rayleigh. Um, do you need a, yo a yoga mat for your dog? Probably not. I probably wouldn't put that on the essential list, especially like a, a name brand yoga mat, <laughs> no less. But it had owls. It wasn't that expensive, but still. Um, yes, I don't think you need a yoga mat for your dog. The reason I have one is because Rayleigh likes to sit on my yoga mat, and especially when I take her to the park, um, I want her to sit on her own mat so that she's not sitting on my mat. So again, maybe it is an essential. Maybe your dog likes to do yoga with you and a dog yoga mat is on your list. Um, and then, like I said, I have three yoga mats total. And so I like to switch out between the one that I'm sitting on and then the one in this bag here. And of course, it matches the bag. I don't know if you can tell, but it has the same type of pattern on it as the bag, um, which I like. Do you need your yoga mat to match your bag? Not really, um, but it was cute. And so I will say, it is useful for me personally to have a second yoga mat um, if I'm doing yoga outside and I don't feel like washing the mat at that moment, but otherwise really one mat will do it. Um, I don't think you really need more than one um, unless you're extra like me. Um, but I will say in terms of like what yoga mat to get, um, I will just note that I have tried uh, less nice yoga mats. I've tried cheaper ones and I just didn't like them. Like in terms of like when you're doing, how I judge a yoga mat, like when you're doing downward dog, do your feet slip? Um, and a lot of the cheaper ones, I literally like, they either squish in too much or like my feet are slipping because it doesn't have that kind of grip to it. And so, um, this is not sponsored. Um, I should say obviously, but I have, um, oh, I think it's on the other side. Um, however you say this, Gaiam, G-A-I-A-M. I was going to look it up how to say it, um, but I didn't. So here we are. Um, that's the, the brand I use for my yoga mats, but there's, I'm sure, plenty of other reputable and good brands out there. 
I just personally like these and I also like um, getting a little bit of a thicker yoga mat that's can be kind of controversial because people say that if you have a little bit of a thicker mat then your your feet can kind of like squish into it and then again you can not have as much control and as much um like it can be pretty sticky so i like to go for like the six millimeter i believe this is six millimeters i think rayleigh's i'm just like looking at i think rayleigh's is four so hers is a lot thinner and so if i were to do yoga on hers like three is like the standard and i find that much too um i find it not not doable for me personally especially for different like knee poses like there's no way i could get away with a three millimeter yoga mat but i'm also doing yoga on hardwood floors or outside on concrete um as i was saying uh i like the thicker yoga mat um but in any case if you're gonna do yoga you're gonna do it consistently you need a mat and i highly 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 recommend and investing and a good one because you're going to notice a difference i honestly like i've returned many yoga mats i'm like i can't i was like this is the cutest pattern but honestly i would definitely prioritize function um over what is the other word fashion whatever like i tried to get cute yoga mats if i could but um definitely highly recommend um investing in a good yoga mat so our number two item do you need a carrying case and so I have different I have a couple of them here so these are the ones that um, they have like it fits the entire mat in it it has like a strap like this it has like a pocket for your phone or whatever and I think this one has something similar let's see yeah it's similar this one has like a little air vent um, basically because your yoga mat gets smelly if you sweat on it a lot um, and then the other option is just your standard, um, how do I show this? I unrolled my yoga mat. Um, it just goes on your yoga mat so you can carry it, but it doesn't have like a whole bag. And so I will just say, if you're going to yoga class, if you're leaving your house, you should have something to put your yoga mat in. I will just say it's it's not very helpful and I didn't like roll this up correctly um, but it's not very helpful if you're just trying to like have your mat and it's like unrolling on you while you're trying to carry it um, I would say do whatever you like um, in terms of what you want to get like if this is sufficient I don't know this is like I think this is a bad this is like this is not staying at all but maybe this is a small yoga mat but anyway um there are other ones that are better that hold your um hold your yoga mat in um so you can carry it over your shoulder or whatnot um i would just get something if you are leaving your house that you that is useful i rarely leave my house to do yoga maybe if i'm going um to the park so it's really unnecessary that i have two of these yoga bags although i say that and i put rayleigh's mat in here um, so maybe it is necessary, um, for the dog, but anyway, bags, eh, do you need a nice bag? You could probably get a cheaper one. I don't think you need to invest in a nice bag, but it's good to have something, um, something to bring, um, your, your mat with. And let me show you this bag. Do you need like a fancy duffel bag? For your that's like branded and everything no you don't need this um i will say what is useful it does have the the yoga mat carrier thing on the front and so it does sorry i really rolled this poorly but you are able to put put your mat through here on the front so like that can be useful if you want to have um put your blocks in here or any other kind of accessories um but in general, I don't think it's really necessary. It's just like a regular duffel bag. So if you happen to go places a lot with yoga and you wanna have the, um, with yoga, that you're gonna practice and you wanna have the, the built-in yoga mat carrier at the front, that can be helpful. But otherwise, you can pretty much get away with any kind of duffel bag and you don't really need a specific um, yoga one in my opinion. Okay, what else? Over here on my left, 
Um, let's talk about yoga blocks. The answer is yes. You don't always need yoga blocks. So there's a lot of poses and a lot of different scenarios where you don't use yoga blocks, but if you're gonna buy anything, invest in a good quality mat first and then get some yoga blocks. I will say you don't have to invest in super high quality yoga blocks. There are tons of them out there for very inexpensive. I happen to invest in nicer ones. I like them because they um, end up holding up a lot better. I find that my cheaper ones that I've used, they have, um, I get a lot of scratches in them and they just don't look as good. I mean, these are still scratched up because I use them a bit, quite a bit, but I like these because they're tri-colored, fancy. Um, but anyway, um, you can get away without using yoga blocks, especially if you're just testing it out and you're not sure if you're gonna do yoga long-term. Um, so that's something that um, you can decide at that point, but one set, two yoga blocks, highly recommend purchasing. Do you need four? Not really. <laughs> do I have four? Yes, <laughs> not four sets, just four. Um, but yeah, so next up, yoga blanket. Do you need a yoga blanket? Do you need three yoga blankets? No, no one needs these. Do I have them? Yes. Maybe if you're doing hot yoga, um, then maybe it's helpful. Um, so I use these um, primarily for cushioning on my knees, especially because I'm working on hardwood floor and my knees are pretty sensitive. Um, other people, for hot yoga, for example, you can use these um, to like spread out on your mat and you're supposed to, because they're like specifically made for yoga, you're supposed to be able to do all of your poses on them and then have kind of the sweatiness and everything um, get absorbed into the towel instead of your mat. Um, I don't know, I don't think this would work very well. Like even though this is specifically made for yoga, I couldn't do yoga on a towel, I would be slipping everywhere, so. Um, you can just use any blanket or any towel for this. Um, if you want to buy like specific yoga towels, you can, but you can use any blanket, any towel, um, and it'll work just fine. Um, okay, next up, while we're on the topic of sweaty yoga mats, I have this container. Do you need this container with washcloths in it? No, you don't need this. Um, but I did want to mention um, that yoga mat spray is something that i think is really useful um you don't have to have specifically yoga mat spray but i would highly recommend um washing your yoga mats and also i have those special bin of washcloths these are like old washcloths um because i kind of have designated them as my yoga mat cleaning washcloths because just because of the chemicals like this has essential oil in it and I don't necessarily want that on my um, good washcloths um, but I would recommend washing your yoga mat especially if you sweat in a lot um, definitely every few times if not every time I definitely do not wash my yoga mat every time I'm not going to pretend like I do um, but yeah it's uh Highly, highly recommend getting either some sort of yoga mat spray or just washing your mat. Um, the only benefit of getting like a specifically um, yoga spray that's designed for yoga mats is just to make sure you don't, um, like it's not slippery um, when you're using it. Like once the mat is slippery, you don't want to do that because then it can mess up your practice. Um, I made this one based on a recipe by Yoga with Adrian. I will link it um, in the description down below in case you are interested. And I put a cute label on it. You probably can't see it's far away. Um, but yeah, definitely highly recommend washing your yoga mats. Um, what else do I got here? Foam roller. This is not traditionally used in yoga. However, I will end up using this foam roller um, for supported fish specifically just because it's a little bit more gentle. Um, so do you need a foam roller for yoga? No. Um, is it sometimes useful? It can be. And I think last but not least, oh no, two more items. I gotta figure out how to pick this up with my nails. Okay, uh, second to last, do you need a yoga bolster? No, the answer is no. No one needs this. Uh, do I have one and do I use it? Sometimes, um, 
but does anyone need this? No. And so yoga bolsters are typically used in restorative yoga. And this is actually like an off-brand one. I just like had this purple vibe going, um, which is strange. I just couldn't find everything in pink. Otherwise I would have had a pink vibe going, but there was a lot of purple stuff. And so yeah, this is not a brand name or high quality bolster per se, but it works um, really well um, for my purposes. It's just a matter of can you use like a couch cushion? Can you use a couple pillows? Um, yes, if you're doing a ton of restorative yoga, I could see why this would be useful. Again, I do use it, but I use it very rarely. So I would say this is definitely not, um, not necessary, like I said, unless you're doing a ton of restorative yoga and you don't want to like stack up pillows or things like that, or if you don't have like a tall pillow, because this is this is this one's pretty tall. You can get um, bolsters of various sizes and um, heights. Um, this one does have a handle on it on both sides, so it is helpful actually for being able to pick it up like that. But in general, bolsters can be really expensive, and I don't find that I use mine that much. So I'll leave this here because I don't feel like moving it back. Okay, and last but not least, so controversial. Do you need a yoga strap? And so I've got two, I've got a pink one and a blue one. Obviously I couldn't find a purple one to match, unfortunately, um, but I've got two yoga straps and I think they're different lengths. You can get them, yeah, in different lengths. The pink one is shorter and this one is longer. I don't know what they are, like five feet maybe. I don't know, I just invented that. Um, but yeah, do you need a yoga strap? Um, no. I just find that I am pretty much never reaching for this yoga strap. So not like because this is a bad yoga strap, but just because of the poses and postures that I tend to do, um, I don't tend to use a strap. It can be useful to kind of get a little bit more of a stretch. If there's a lot of poses that you're doing that require a yoga strap, they're not usually that expensive. You can get one for really in, you know inexpensive, but you can also substitute a yoga strap for those situations like using a rope tie or belt or something like that or scarf honestly like no one needs this <laughs> do i have two of them yes does anyone need this no um again it can be useful but just for like basic practices i don't find that i'm i think i've used this once in like the past six months in a recent video but otherwise I've never used it. So that's my opinion um, of that. But if you take anything away from this video, I would say don't invest in all of the things, invest in a good yoga mat and get some blocks. You don't have to get a nice um, set of blocks, but you have to get, uh, you don't have to. I would recommend getting yoga blocks, but really skipping most of the rest of this again you can get a bag if you want but again you can use just like a regular duffel bag you have at home already so again if you take any way anything away invest in a good yoga mat and then yes get your um get your yoga blocks but again you can get these on like amazon or something for really cheap um so yeah hopefully this was helpful um let me know if there's other yoga equipment you use down in the comments down below but thank you so much for watching and Stay well, my friends.